Hello again, Steve here, just to do a few prelude words on uh, a topic we're going to do a coffee chat on upcoming, I think it's, well, not this coming week, it's the next week anyway, Tuesday. And somebody suggested the topic called experiential learning. I think it's a good topic because it's a valuable lesson, I'm sure, and more and more I believe this to be the case. Um, I, I'm in Toastmasters, as I've mentioned a million times, and I've mentioned it once here, and uh, one of their slogans is uh, learning while doing, and of course doing something is, the result is experience, right? Um, and this is probably why, you know, when we go and try to find an expert for somebody, for something, hopefully we have we find somebody with some credibility which includes experience in it. Uh, I don't think we'd want to get major surgery on our brain by somebody who just got their their doctor's certificate or whatever. We'd like to know somebody who had been very experienced in it and has a good reputation because they know it better. I think there's gradients of how much we we know on a deep level like there's believing in somebody, in something, there's having faith in something maybe, but that, that, or there's, or there's reading about something, uh, listening to what somebody is saying about something, but when we experience something, it's a whole other story. I, I like to use the example of, you know, somebody could read all they want, they could become an expert in terms of book learning about sex, but until they actually experience it, it's just that it's it's theoretical. Uh, that for that reason, I don't think I would ask a priest for uh, advice on uh, sexual relationships, or whatever. Unless, of course, that priest was quite proficient in it, which he may very well be. He or she may very well be. Um, that is to say, I wouldn't ask a celibate, uh, a chronically celibate priest. So experiential learning is perhaps the highest form of learning. What makes maybe makes it even more, um, what makes the learning even deeper is, is then helping others to experience that. Um, myself, for example, through being involved in public speaking for a while, that has become it's become more natural. And then I find with having coached a club and coached other members in the club, upon what I had learned, it becomes even more ingrained. It becomes more of a, a natural part, a natural habitual part, or a more uh, intuitive part of oneself. So I think it is important, experiential learning. Um, I was listening to something fairly recently. Oh, it was uh, I'm I'm, re, re, I'm at this point going through this book by uh, it's an autobiography of, of Keith Richards, and it's interesting his story, even though it was a crazy story in a way. But how he it, it, he has a way of explaining music. It sounds like a love affair with music. He really, really loved his music from a very early age. And the way he describes getting his first guitar was like he'd just been born again. I mean, he described himself as being more dedicated to that, to music than a Dominican is to God almost. I mean, he was just, they would, they didn't have anything, him and his buddies, but they had their music. And he would sleep with his guitar, and he would practice days on end and almost eat nothing. And people would have to come over, neighbors and so on, and local uh, groupie girls, before there was groupies even, to clean their laundry and, and tidy up their place and everything, because they just, they just played guitar. I mean, even girls were, weren't important to them in those early days, because they just, it was... So, talk about how much experience those guys had, how many hours they spent listening over and over and over again to those few records they had, 
trying to figure out everything on that guitar the experience of it so it becomes natural you see them now on the stage and it looks like their fingers are just flowing natural well that's the the learning of experience you could you could read a book about it you could say oh yeah put your fingers here and there and there and there but there's no there's no and, and so there's experience it becomes more real but also the the whole body begins to learn it's like when somebody first learns how to walk it's very awkward consider where to put the foot and so on. People who have had accidents and they lose their memory of how to walk. they got to go through therapy and learn. So it has to be, okay, put this leg forward. It's conscious. It's a conscious sense data um, cooperation going on the whole time. Whereas when there's experience learning after a while, it becomes fluid. Same with learning a language, right? Learning one's, uh, one's mother tongue is, is very fluid. And then to be able to learn another language takes a while, and it often takes immersion in the experience for a protracted period of time, perhaps, until it becomes natural. But it's it's very very important. I think any kind of learning is important, you know, visual, reading, listening to people, and so on. But at a certain point, for many things, many practical things in life, you know, things like um, learning a new skill, at a certain point we have to do it. I mean, remember. Years ago when I was in the military, um, and on other jobs that I've been on, when taking on a new task, the idea was you would shadow or double bank with somebody, so that you have an experienced worker. So you hang out with him or her for a while on the watches, say maybe a week, and taking notes, watching what they do at first, and then say taking some notes, and then that person gets you to go and and ask ask you questions, okay, what are we going to do here on this machine? What are the things we're going to do here? So you have to try to remember. And then and then at a certain point, you know what? you got to do it. So now, I had to go around and do the things and take the notes and the watch, keeping notes and logs and so on. And the other person would observe, so I missed something, okay, do this, do that. But after a while of doing it, it becomes natural. And I find that if I never had the chance to do it, if it was somebody who just wants to show me only, then it's a lot harder to retain. So experiential learning, I find, is much easier to, much easier to retain. And ultimately, I have to get there. I have to get there to the experiential learning level. And over and over and over and over again, until confidence rises. So with experiential learning, I say that's another benefit, is that confidence rises with it. Therefore, in terms of our quality of life, where do we want to go, right? What do we want to do? How do we want to improve? Well, at a certain point, we have to experience what we want. Experience it over and over and over again until it becomes part of us. And uh, it becomes kind of hab habitual in a lifestyle. Um, things like learning how to be a healthier person, you know, eating a healthier diet. Well, at first, it's kind of a... A hassle. You get used to shopping for new things and cooking in different ways, and having different things around, not having things around, and implementing that day after day after day after day until it becomes the experience of a new life, and then it becomes natural. I think. So I hope this was helpful, and I look forward to this upcoming coffee chat in a few in a week and a half or so on experiential learning. Steve here again, great chatting. Talk again soon. Bye for now.